This video will put forward the idea that we have Zeno's paradoxes because there is something fundamentally wrong with our understanding of the structure of space and time. This forms a problem that runs through the whole of human mathematics that starts with the discovery of irrational numbers in ancient Greece and forms infinities at the base of Newton's calculus. It can also be seen at the heart of Cantor's set theory and as a paradox in his continuum hypothesis. Quantum electrodynamics also suffers from the same problem of infinities that has never been properly solved. There is also the measurement problem of quantum physics that has no logical explanation. All this can only be explained by a fundamental change in our concept of space and time. Zeno's paradoxes can be expressed in many ways, but for the purpose of this video it is best to think of dropping an object and measuring the time the object takes to reach the ground. We can always have the length of time the object takes to reach the ground, and by doing this we will form a never-ending infinite series. Therefore, mathematically, the object should never reach the ground. Zeno rejected the idea of infinity, and so he had a paradox, and believed that movement and change to be an illusion, and that only what was mattered. But the theory I am now going to explain does not reject infinity, but explains it as a universal process that forms the arrow of time and geometry of space-time. This does not mean that Zeno was wrong, it just explains a physical process that forms the mathematical paradox. In this theory the forward passage of time is formed by the forward motion of light or electromagnetic radiation forming the geometry of space-time. The probabilistic nature of the wave particle duality of light forms the uncertainty of everyday life. This is represented mathematically by the quantum wave particle function that is continuously forming the forward passage of time itself, photon by photon or moment by moment. Therefore Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is the same uncertainty that we have with any future event and represents potential future possibilities. The answer to the problem of infinity is that it only has the potential probability to exist. Aristotle was the first to introduce the idea of something being potentially infinite. The reason why we can always divide infinity into sets of infinities is because of this continuous process of the wave particle function collapsing into new quantum particles of space and time. This forms a continuous expansion at the quantum level that forms the continuum of time and the geometry of space-time that can always be divided into sets of infinities. A mathematician will continuously form his own space-time geometry just like any other object in our universe. Therefore it is only natural that he will be able to divide that geometry into infinitely smaller parts. This is no different to how larger objects, like planets, form their own gravity relative to their energy or mass, forming Einstein's curvature of space-time. We are all active participants in the dynamics of our universe. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time as part of an infinite process. It is because this process is continuous that our number system is infinite and we have an infinite series of whole numbers. In this theory we have a potential infinity of probabilities at every degree and angle of space-time because the quantum wave particle function is continuously collapsing and reforming. Therefore one thing after another is always coming into existence as part of the time continuum. This can be explained mathematically by what Cantor called the continuum hypothesis because it deals with the continuum of numbers between 0 and 1. Cantor discovered that we have more than one kind of infinity and that there are more numbers between 0 and 1 than there are whole numbers. What Cantor had found was a mathematical structure to infinity that could be divided up into sets. Infinity was no longer just an abstract idea 
and could be explained by set theory. Set theory lies at the heart of mathematics, but counter set theory relies on there being a choice of choosing one member of any non-empty subset. This has caused a problem because there is no explanation of human interaction of how the choice is to be made. In this theory, we have physical starting point to any infinite series. We can choose when and where to collapse the quantum wave particle function, forming new particles in space and new moments in time. This will form a new wave function of future potential that will expand out from zero in all directions along the x and y axis as part of an infinite series. Just as Cantor could mathematically build up a never-ending series of larger and larger infinities starting from its base between zero and one, this theory can also do the same in the physical world. Therefore the infinities of the mathematics of quantum electrodynamics are not a problem. They represent the continuum of time itself that is infinite and there is no need for the process called renormalization. Newton believed the universe to be a true infinity. In the creation of calculus, Newton thought in terms of motion and fluidity, not in terms of the infinitely small. This continuous process of change can be seen as a universal process of symmetry forming and breaking that forms fractional self-similarities. Fractional chaos theory shows that it is possible to have infinity in a finite world. All we need is a way of dividing space up into infinitely smaller portions. This theory explains a process of how space-time can be continuously formed that can always be divided up mathematically into infinitely smaller portions. The forward momentum of light or electromagnetic radiation is continuously collapsing and reforming. This forms a universal fractal branching process that forms the geometry of space-time and the arrow of time itself. This also explains the incompleteness theorem that says that some problems in mathematics can't be solved no matter how you approach the problem. This is because the universe is in a process of continuous creation and even using mathematics we can never have a complete picture of what the future might hold. This is why we have the measurement problem and can never know the position and momentum of a quantum particle at the same time because it would be like trying to predict part of our own future. Something is in existence or it has the potential to exist but never both. In this theory Mathematical infinity, physical infinity, and absolute infinity are all one of the same. To quote William Blake, If the door of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. <laughs>